Thank you very much. And um, this is really a pleasure for me to come here as from health sciences to mostly the environmental uh, folks. And I call this the democratization of science, uh, that scientists come speak to other scientists openly and to the decision makers. I really uh, appreciate this opportunity and, and uh, uh, look forward to further building on this. So um, what I'm going to talk to about to you uh, today is uh, water, oil, so, uh, water, air, soil, and temperature from as health, health risk factors for the 21st century. Uh, because this area has been well studied, as you've seen from the environmental perspective, but not as much as needed for the health impact. So um, I'm going to touch uh, the surface on some of the projects we're working on. And uh, in terms of soil, um, working with Keith Pizzoli, uh, who is a powerhouse on campus in urban studies and planning. And this is a picture from uh, Los Laureles Canyon, which is the, uh, right on the border. And this is from here looking, uh, this is the picture looking th that way. And this canyon is really mostly illegal uh, settlement by people. And these uh, green dots are all illegal dump sites. So it's a dumping place. And people live ar around it. And so uh, the idea is, and this is a picture of one of these dump sites. We want to know, well, it's in the soil. How much is it reaching to the people? Uh, we've already measured it in the soil. We've seen high level of heavy metals uh, that actually are migrating back to the US because it's a um, a uh, south-north tilt. And uh, the next stage is to try and uh, look at involving body fluid, dust, and soil bi biosensors for heavy metals. So we would involve the uh, J Jacobs School of Engineering, uh, Urban Studies and Planning, and the School of Medicine as one uh, collaboration. In terms of water quality, um, in the future, by 2070, about 150 million people will be affected by flooding. And so this is uh, not measured in terms of how this is going to impact health of people living in these places. This is, it's not very clear here, but this is Imperial Beach, and, and this is the plume, um, dark, darkish soil kind of from flooding uh, that goes into the sea. And as part of collaboration and me trying to reach out, uh, talked with Falk Federson from SIO, uh, who is well, very well kind of oriented in ocean mechanics and modeling, said, well, what if we are able to predict what the canyon which I just showed you, which the water kind of goes from the estuary to here, um, we can know what are the toxicants that are in the canyon reaching the sea and how it's affecting people. So we worked together and applied for NSF funding uh, we didn't get it because basically it's challenging to get interdisciplinary scientists to work, and NSF doesn't really fund health, but that's some of the aspects that we face. Uh, but adding something like dynamic water and human toxicant biosensors using the uh, engineering school, we would actually have four entities working together, School of Medicine, USP, SIO, and uh, Jacobs School of Engineering. Then in terms of air pollution, um, this is uh, New Delhi, and you can see uh, I was supposed to be today there with uh, Brahmanathan and group. We are working on an exciting project with, uh, involving California and India on mitigation of air pollution. But this is going to be a major problem in the future. Brahmanathan is very well known worldwide, probably the leader in black carbon and satellite imaging and how that affecting global warming and melting of the glaciers. They've published very well but they have not looked at the more kind of micro level of what is this affecting the health of the people, the villagers who are producing this biomass fuel. So I'm working with them for the last two years trying to get an opportunity to fund a project to build on their excellent uh, team science. 3.2 million people are dying er every year, and this is expanding. So this is a major public health problem that lacks the appropriate and uh, um, efficient uh, health uh, studies. So by bringing in engineering and combustion mechanics, we could, like this room now is free of smoke, could stop both the health and the climate uh, effects. 
So again, a four-way collaboration is here within campus, all of it. And finally, in terms of temperature, uh, you know, the extreme temperatures are all related to global warming. And this is a recent picture of uh, um, uh, record heats uh, in, in, in the West Coast. And we have um, Alexander Gershnov and Kristin Gerges, who are experts in the uh, modeling of heat uh, waves, and especially night heat, which is when it's damp and heat it can, uh, and, and hot, it can affect health more because the typical uh, heat wave has the day heat and then it cools down the, in the night. It's not cooling down with these excessive heat waves. So this is now here, the blue is the excess heat uh, at night. In 200, uh, 2100, it'll increase fivefold. And with that is more than sevenfold increase of the mortality and morbidity from, um, from these heat waves. So clearly there is a, a three-way collaboration here if we can get computing algorithms, and I've been talking with people uh, in engineering on that. So um, in terms of the education component, which is required as part of this, I've been working with Alan Houston from Political Science in developing this uh, UCSD Global uh, Practicum database, where it's a, 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 um, a database where students can go and search for practical ex experiences like what I mentioned and elsewhere to uh, expand their horizon and, and uh, understanding. And um, Office of Research uh, Affairs have been very helpful in trying to help uh, populate this database. So in summary, uh, humans and their health are the ultimate beneficiaries from uh, protection of the planet. But there is a major deficiency in assessment of health impact of, of the degradation of the planet. And uh, the interdisciplinary science will be needed really to move the bar forward. Uh, but again, uh, as Mike, I have experienced, it took two years to cultivate this kind of interdisciplinary science where we're talking different languages. I learned so much from all the colleagues that I worked uh, with. And the challenges that we face in many uh, occasions that funding bodies do not understand or do not fund this kind of uh, very interdisciplinary um, uh, collaborations. And, and those are the, the collaborations I've been uh, working with, and I appreciate each one of them. I learned so much from them, and thank you. Great, thanks. We have time for one short question back here. That your work is treating our own region as a living laboratory, and your project, amongst a handful of others, are really debunking this notion that a parochial focus is sort of a little bit less somehow, because you have brought the global into the local, this high science, uh, integrating it. Any, I mean, do you find this a problem, focusing on our region? Uh, what can you say about well, that? Well, I, mean, uh, I mean, I think our campus is going into that direction. We are clearly the closest city to the border, um, and we have a, a less developed country just uh, a, few, a, a few miles away, and this is a natural experiment, and that's why we're taking opportunity of that. So I think the, the campus and the chancellor are looking into that direction. Yeah, and to follow up on that, the confluence here at UCSD is our proximity to Mexico, so developing nation. Um, what you showed us with the disposal is real, and when we have weather effects, um, there's rain and runoff that comes straight out into the ocean. And here at UCSD, we've got a world-class oceanographic institution, and you're bringing them all together here in this project, which is a fantastic thing. All right, thank, thank you. you.